question, our final speaker in this session, um, before we open up to the floor, is Felipe Van Cruisville from Belgium. Thank you, Jude, and thank you for the organizers. Uh, first, I apologize for my bad English. And second, as Jude said, uh, on the agenda I am mentioned as CADTM. I am a single member of the CADTM, but I'm mainly here as uh, working as the General Secretary of uh, Trade Union in Belgium, part of the main trade union in Belgium, counting with 1.7 million members. But uh, I was one of the animators of this art summit process. And I think this is why I was invited here. Um, quickly, uh, what were the two reasons why we launched the art summit process one year ago? It was two statements. Uh, the first is very known, and so I will be quick. Is that we are living the worst crisis since World War II, and it's not a debt crisis, as you all know. Debt level has been higher in the past. Debt level is very higher in Japan than in Europe. Debt level is never the problem. The problem is relationship with markets and the way in which debt is financed. So it's not a debt crisis. Neither is it a job crisis or an unemployment crisis. Of course, we have a huge level of unemployment, but that's a consequence, not the cause. So we are certainly not in a crisis caused by uh, unemployment. And it's not a lack of wealth. It's just right explained that uh, European GDP uh, has decreased, but we are not in a situation with, in, which, in which the uh, money is uh, lacking. Uh, in my country, uh, you cannot buy a Ferrari or a Porsche because uh, the, they are all uh, sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Uh, uh, the bill billionaires are increasing uh, uh, quickly. Uh, and finally, it's not a Greek crisis, neither a Portuguese crisis. It's a crisis of the capital system in Europe. And so we have to tackle this crisis uh, with answers at the level of the crisis. It's not the crisis as usual, because from my birth, it's crisis. And uh, before, <coughs> uh, now it's something else, a political crisis, a change of regime. And the second statement was to state the weakness of European social movements. Uh, of course, we have especially since the crisis began, huge national mobilizations. But until now, people fight separately and are defeated separately. Uh, we had one million people in the streets of Lisbon, like we, we heard again today. But uh, I think in Frankfurt, or in Brussels, offices of the European Commission, one million people shouting in Lisbon make very little noise and it doesn't uh, impeach Mr. Barroso to sleep or to make his work. So we have national fragmentation and besides this fragmentation we have also fragmentation between the parts of the, of the social rights Chris uh, perfectly referred to. Um, since years I have heard a lot of criticism from social movements against trade unions. Or a Spanish comrade uh, one hour ago also explained why he's angry against Commission Sobreras. Of course, trade unions may rightly ask social movements what did they deliver since years and years of European social forums and so on. And both social movements and trade unions can criticize political parties. What did they do? what did they achieve, and so on. So every part of the social movements in the broad sense can criticize all parts. The approach of the other summit is to call all forces wanting to fight against austerity, neoliberal European Union, and nationalist division between people and races to come together. And the 
last reason why the European social movement seems to us to be so weak is that as a new and specific political system, European Union works as a magic trick of smoke and mirrors. <coughs> when you look to your government and ask why they are uh, taking austerity measures that don't work, that destroy jobs, <coughs> that destroy social model, and that threatens democracy, your government will answer, okay, friends, we agree with you, but the European Union has decided. And then, if you turn you against the European Union, they will answer you, decisions were made by Council of Head of States, so go to your Prime Minister. And you never can face the power. Uh, when you want to really face the power, it is not in front of you, it's behind you, everywhere, but in the, in, uh, in, you, you cannot find it. So our political duty now is to break, break these mirrors and try to find the power and face it. That's the point of the artist. Uh, we want it, as I said, to make all forces against austerity to converge. <coughs> and in one year, uh, we gathered 189 organizations from 20 countries. Uh, which organizations? Um, trade unions, including some of the biggest one in Europe, at national and at European level. Of course, not all trade unions, because of course, you probably know, not all trade unions find them comfortable in a very clear anti-austerity and anti-neoliberal uh, statement. But a lot of them. Main feminist movements, anti-globalizations, or solidarity networks, and some, to be frank, we are quite weak on this level, but some ecological grassroots movements, and some peasants, food sovereignty, common movements. <coughs> Also important personalities, one of the very first to support the call for the other summit, I'm proud to say, was Cambodge. But we have dozens of high-level European personalities supporting the call, and also political personalities. In Athens, on June 7, we had three important political leaders from different groups uh, voicing their support to the, to the program and to the process. And also, I'm happy to hear Chris remind it, important critical economist networks um, who also are you now federating into a broad European network, <coughs> European, Europe, European progressive economist network. Um, well, that's the state of the network. Um, did we achieve some results? Well, not all. <laughs> so, uh, first, uh, I will give you five and then I finish. Um, first, uh, a quite well-organized network of organizations, and please, not of individuals. I think individuals have to organize in their community, in their trade unions, in their feminist or pacifist or ecological movements. As a European network, Artists Summit is a network of organizations with an assembly, a European coalition committee, and with transparent functioning rules, democratically decided and to be followed. Then second result, uh, it's a people's manifesto, not too long, four pages, approved by organizations, approved by nearly 180 organizations, with four very urgent common demands. Of course, it's always disappointing when you read this kind of manifesto uh, from your own point of view. If I read it from the point of view of my trade union, I can see some important points from my trade union in Belgium that are not in this manifesto. <coughs> but the point was to keep a short and strong and focused manifesto on some very urgent common demands and to have four chapters with in each chapter quite clear political demands, not wishes. We are not asking for a better world. Of course we want that. 
but that's not the political job to be done. Four chapters with political demands were free people from debt slavery. Second, roll back austerity and claim a urban-wide investment program for social and ecological development. Three, decent job and decent income for all and restoring unions' right to act and to bargain. And fourth and last, bring back banks to paper service. These four chapters were longly discussed six months work between the organizations and finally approved by a <coughs> large a large network of organizations. I think this manifesto, of course, will not change the world by itself, but it's a good basis to work with. Third result was the event in Athens, June 7 and 8, 2,500 people in the total uh, attending it, uh, with a quite weak Greek participation. That was a bit disappointing, to be frank. Uh, uh, our Greek comrades explained in very frank and open <coughs> the reasons why it was not possible for them to have a more huge mobilization in this uh, Athens larger state. Well, on the other hand, we had nearly 1,000 people coming from 22 countries, and most of them representative of their organization. Uh, that's important for us. Uh, I will not give you a long list of examples, but having very high-level leaders of German trade unions coming in Greece, explaining that they want to act in solidarity with Greek struggles, is important and probably, from my point of view, more important than having just thousand individuals coming up on behalf of themselves, just because they want to go with Athens. So uh, it, it was a quite good European success, even if the Greek mobilization was weak. Um, Going to Athens was not by casualty, uh, 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 by chance, it was not by chance. Uh, it was to show solidarity with Greek struggles, and it was also because we see the very political dimension of the crisis, and we wanted to say in a clear way that the struggle of democracy should not be its thumb. Fourth result is that beyond the Athens event, we want to build a process because the only point interesting us is to change the power balance. We have a good manifesto, but we have already dozens of manifestos. I suppose all of you have home uh, a lot of good manifestos on what Europe should be. Uh, the only point is to change the power balance. And for that, we need a continuing process. And my last point is what are our next steps? Well, to be frank, we will discuss them in the weeks to come, because we, Athens was just two weeks ago, and organizations must have time to make their own assessment and come back together and to decide together uh, in a clear way what are our next steps. So it's my view on next steps. Um, I think we have to make a good use of the manifesto. It's a very good and important text. It will be translated in a dozen, a dozen of languages and it must be used. Then, the most important, we, we have to make convergence of actions. European social movements doesn't need a, a single headquarter somewhere in Brussels or I don't know where. Deciding where and when people have to react, that's not realistic. But we have to build on the struggles of the people and make conversions, and we think it's possible to do so. We must also reinforce the network. We are weak on some levels, and we are weak in some regions of Europe, especially it's still difficult in Eastern Europe, even if we have even more and more moments, but we remain quite weak. The last point is if we want to break this magic trick of smoke and mirrors, we do not only need a strong European network, we need a European social movement deeply rooted at national level. And it's my main question coming here to London, is to ask how we can make steps to 
towards a more deeply rooted uh, link between the art of cement uh, process and the, the fantastic moves in the British social movement. I was really uh, amazed by the great day of yesterday. Um, but to be frank, uh, until now, uh, the, the link between the European level and the British organization is quite weak. Coalition resistance is very helpful and very good in making links with the European coordination. TUC, as TUC, is a member, and I, I think it's fine. But we know it only works when the National Federation of Trade Unions, local communities, organizations, uh, sectoral social movements involved. That's until now, that's not the case in the United Kingdom. I think we have to serve together in a very honest and humble way how to build these links in more people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, right, we now have about 